Mitt McCain came out and attacked President Trump for his pardoning of America's sheriff, Joe Arpaio. But as we all know, Sheriff Joe is a fighter, and so he punched back at the vile, decrepit senator. Here's what he said. I'm a little surprised at the senator. He did call me after my election loss. I'm really shocked that he took that shot at me. I stayed out of his race as a matter of courtesy and he called me after I lost. Anything I can do for you? Well, thanks senator. Thanks a lot. Maybe it's not just me. He doesn't like the president so going after me he figures will make the president look bad. But that's sad. That's how politicians are. Remember who the deciding vote was on Obamacare? Think of that. Think of that and how many people are going to suffer. He should be supporting our president. Aprio then responded to the other idiot senator from Arizona, Jeff Flake, who of course, also disagreed with the pardon, saying. I would have preferred that the president honor the judicial process and let it take its course. Arpaio said Flake is trying to make points with the mayor. And all those other Democrat politicians and all of those activists saying the same thing. Arpaio also went on to explain that he's in millions of dollars of debt because of the sham case, and needs help with his legal fees. Arpaio then praised President Trump, saying I would still support him regardless of the pardon. I'm glad he had the guts to do what he did, he said. I'm just sad that he has to take some heat from certain media outlets if you know what I mean. But they go after him all of the time. When he does anything they tear him apart. I have never seen anything like this. Greetings citizens of the world. President Trump has all eyes on North Korea's border as a new army of nuclear-capable Russian bombers just showed up. They performed a flight mission around the Korean Peninsula, which has been criticized as an action done in response to the United States and South Korean military drills that occurred earlier this week. The Russian mission included fighter escorts, bombers with nuclear capabilities, and at least one aircraft equipped with intelligence-gathering technology. A spokesperson from Russia's defense ministry released a statement that might put people back at ease. They stated our long-range aviation pilots, according to an established plan, regularly carry out flights over neutral waters over the Atlantic, the Arctic, the Black Sea and the Pacific Ocean from their bases and from tactical airfields, however that doesn't put South Korea at ease. South Korean officials suggest the Russian flight violated their airspace. This places some sideshow undercards entertainment between Russia and South Korea in the mix of the main event with the United States squaring off against North Korea. South Korea was not happy with the Russian flights. As the Russian aircraft entered the Cadiz, Korea Air Defense Identification Zone, in formation yesterday morning, a squadron of our Air Force jets made an emergency sorties, an anonymous source in the government told Yonhap on Thursday. The flight was announced by the Russian Defense Ministry on the same day the Russians officially complained about the war games between South Korea and the United States, leaving little doubt that the two incidents were connected. The U.S. and South Korea holding yet more large-scale military and naval exercises does not help reduce tensions on the Korean Peninsula, Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said during a press briefing. We urge all sides to exercise maximum caution. Given the arms buildup in the region, any rash move or even an unintended incident could spark a military conflict. It appears as though the Russian Defense Ministry announced their flight, but it happened on the same day Russians complained about war games with South Korea and USA. People gathered there was little reason to suggest the flight was not connected to the complaint. On the contrary, the joint practices between South Korea and the United States were planned well in advance. So it's not safe to assume this was anything done in an offensive or aggressive manner. This was something planned well before tensions were rising, so it's not a safe assumption to assume the joint exercises between the USA and South Korea were done to show strength or action towards North Korea or Russia. Russia making itself known in North Korea is a game changer, and not a particularly good one, especially since, along with China, they're one of Pyongyang's closer allies. If there's anyone who should be shaking right now, it's North Korea. Either Trump or Putin could point a finger, say boom, 
and annihilate the North Koreans in a matter of minutes. The dictator of North Korea can barely launch a test missile without flubbing it, so there's not much of a threat there. Sure, they have some weapons, but they don't have our weapons. The American military, under the lead of Mad Dog Madison President Trump, will not be defeated. The Americans will win every battle and every war if they're required to fight. The best scenario for North Korea is for their leader to act less like a dictator to his people or step down. The population of North Koreans living under a miserable dictatorship needs to end, but that is essentially their problem. America can't just step in and dethrone the leader of North Korea. That's not how this works. America can and will defend themselves and allies, but they cannot simply move in and remove someone's leader. If they did, then that might open the door for war crimes and really spark a third world war. World War III is something most sane people would like to avoid, even though we know the outcome would see America go undefeated with a 3-0 record. Some suggest Russia and China might be playing games with the United States, but I find that hard to believe. I think USA and Russia are more on the same page than people think. What benefit would Russia and USA have if they ever engaged in a war? It would be a loss for both teams and no true winner could be announced. Well, America would crush them too, but America would still suffer casualties of war and no one wants that to happen. There simply doesn't appear to be an economic victory for battling with Russia. However, it makes more sense for USA and Russia to be on the same page and be world powers together with China and South Korea. If North Korea wants to be the odd man out, then that's their problem. If they keep it up, there won't be much of North Korea left. Greetings citizens of the world, we are anonymous. It is possible that in the next few years, all citizens of America will eventually be tagged with microchips. These chips will be implanted to help identify individuals immediately. The technology will also be used to answer one question, namely am I who I say I am? Refid chips are small electronic devices that consist of a small chip and an antenna. The chip is able to store data, while the antenna allows the sending and receiving of information. When such an object is implanted into your body, and particularly your brain, it is unlikely to come with an easily accessible off switch. Other electronics could be attached to the chip, without your knowledge. These could include GPS emitters, or perhaps even neurotoxin emitters. Being implanted with brain chips is unlikely to endow you with all the knowledge of the universe, or martial arts prowess in a split second, however. Instead, it will serve as the ultimate form of surveillance and subjugation. Considering what the U.S. government has done thus far, with regards to NSA spying, we do not believe that this technology is only about convenience. It will be marketed as such, at least until everyone has one. There is a Wisconsin company called Three Square Market, which is offering to implant their employees with a refit microchip the size of a grain of rice. The chip functions as an NFC-powered multi-purpose key, credit card identification tool that the company sees as the future. This company sells micro-market technology running over 2,000 kiosks and break rooms and other locations worldwide. The chips that at least 50 company employees had received on August 1st will allow them to make purchases at their company's own break room market, so it sure seems to be an alpha test of a potential product offering as much as it is an unusual perk. Employees will also be able to use the chip, implanted between the thumb and index finger, to open doors, use copy machines, log into computers, share business cards and store health information. Although this company's chip program is voluntary and directly related to its product offerings, this could lead on other companies to do the same thing until eventually we're all forced to get these chips implanted into our bodies. Belgian marketing firm New Fusion is also offering this technology, by giving their employees the chance to replace their existing ID cards with refit chips implanted under their skin. The chip contains personal information and provides access to the company's IT systems and headquarters. The microchips used at New Fusion cost around 100 euros and are inserted between the thumb and index finger, very similar to the ones made by Three Square Market. Even back in 2015, 
a Swedish company implanted microchips in its staff which allowed them to use the photocopier, open security doors and even pay for their lunch. This has been going on for years now. It is believed there are now 10,000 people across the world using microchip technology.